All right, we are recording this session. So if that takes the pressure off you all uh, taking notes, that's great. Also, you can certainly contact me if you have any questions afterwards. Okay, it's 12.30, we can actually start here. So welcome everyone. My name is Nathan and I am here to give you some tips and tricks on using Gmail more efficiently. Again, if you're just joining, you can send a chat messages in using the chat option at the bottom and Bonnie is monitoring the chat and uh, will alert me if you have questions. We'll have time at the end as well for individual uh, topics. And I'll try to remember to stop the recording before that. So uh, the first thing I wanted to do is um, actually just make a setting change, and I wanted you to see me do that. Um, I particularly don't like these buttons here because I have trouble remembering what they are. So I like to switch these buttons at the top from icons to text. And so the way I do that is to, by going to settings in the upper right corner under the gear and then settings and there's a, there's just so much in here that um, it can be handy to know a little shortcut for how to find content on a page of text any web page and I'm going to use the shortcut command F if you're on Windows you would use control F and then, then I can search for a keyword such as button labels so I'm switching my button labels from icons to text, and then I'm saving the changes. And now when I uh, select an email, I can see easily what those tools do. So uh, what is Google known for? Searching, right? And so I thought, let's take a look at uh, how do we search in Gmail. It's very obvious, but uh, let's look for the word donation. Hit enter. I don't know if you've ever done this where you're searching for an email and you end up getting everything you don't want and not what you do want. I have all these results that are kind of flooding my screen, so I'd like to get rid of them because it's not what I'm looking for. So I'd actually like to subtract out give MN as a term, and that takes away those results and I can also subtract out ministry and raise a couple other terms that are common but that I, I put a space in there so I'll take that up and right now I'm finding what I'm looking for so this is the email that I wanted to read from Brian Noy and I'd like to be able to find that later faster so I'm gonna put a label on that this is just like a little tag you can add to make searching later easier so I could check that box and then I can add a label and I'll probably think of this as a fundraising email later. So I'll create a new fundraising label. Then if I go back to my inbox again, how do I find that later? I can type just fundraising or I can use this kind of uh, way of specifying, I'm specifically looking for something that is labeled fundraising rather than the word fundraising inside of the email. So you can see the difference. I found one email versus many. Okay, we're good. Um, let's see. I wanted to point out that in the inbox here, there are lots of different symbols and one of those symbols that you'll see is these little arrows sometimes yellow these are yellow uh, to indicate that the message is on the more important side now how is it figure that out it's <laughs> something called google magic i don't know i don't have my uh, an inside scoop on what that means but google does some searching to figure out based on who's sending it who's receiving it how many people are receiving it if it's an email list the content and it decides what's important so um, just just another tip on the uh, little symbols there. All right, next, how do you deal with the deluge of email that we all seem to be getting? Um, 
perhaps you treat your inbox as sort of a task list. And um, if, if you do, then when you're done with an email, what do you do with it? Well, most people will select that email and hit delete. I, uh, so that's fine, but the problem with that is if you ever wanna get that email back again, you can't. You do have a limit, limited window of 30 days where you can find that email, but it does go away from the trash after 30 days permanently. So I'd like to make this the, uh, the case for never deleting anything. I would suggest that rather you archive everything. It, it looks the same on the front end. When I click that, the email goes away from my inbox, but I can find that email again, anytime, forever. And again, a reminder that Gmail has unlimited space. Um, it used to be our older email system had an unlimited amount of space, and if you didn't delete things, they would, uh, your email would not function properly. You would actually lose email from the inbox. No longer a problem here. So I would suggest archiving everything. Now, uh, if you wanna combine a couple things we've just uh, talked about here, um, archiving and labeling together, uh, what you can do is something called move. So move to does two things. It archives, which is the same as removing the inbox label, and it also adds a label of your choice. So I can choose that fundraising label and it will also leave my inbox. So move is label plus archive. Okay, now if you're reading an email and you wanna reply, you'll see you get the, uh, the send button down here. And I don't know if you all know this, you can pop out replies that can be really handy. And then you could actually return to your inbox if you're looking up some other detail there. So you can type in, uh, type your response, and then I could hit send, but, do, but what happens when I do that? And, and then I wanna get rid of this since I've dealt with this question here. Then I have to go in and archive. So I'd like to suggest a new, more efficient way to, to do all those steps in one. And that is adding a second button to your replies. So let me show you just again to review here. When you reply, there's only a send button down here. We're gonna change that by going into settings under the gear in the upper right hand corner. And settings. And I'm looking for something called send and archive here. So we're gonna show the send and archive button in the reply, save changes. And so now when I open up an email and I click reply, I have a new button. The blue button changes to the send and archive. I still have my old original button. So the decision here is, am I done? I click send and archive. I'm not gonna to reply to this anymore. Do I wanna reply again later? I just hit send. You'd probably hit send if you had sent out an email to five people and they were replying to you one at a time and you didn't want to get rid of this from your inbox. You wanted to see the reply, uh, see the email there to remind you to check in with people. So, even if you hit send an archive, <laughs> I'm gonna undo that. <laughs> even if it, you hit send an archive, somebody's not muted there. Paul, I think you might need to mute. There's phone ringing. Sorry, folks. Okay. Paula, if you can hear me, if you can mute, that would be great. Okay, great, thanks. So, um, so we've added this special send the archive button. Um, if you send the archive, you don't have to worry about having lost that. If, if another person replies or the same person replies again to that email, you will see that email pop back into your inbox. It's a very safe thing to do. Next, the most important email in your inbox is probably the unread email, right? So you'll have a combination over time of email that is uh, bold and not bold. There is a way to move all the bold emails to the top, and that is under settings. 
settings again, the inbox collection of settings, and the inbox type called unread first, and then save. And then it puts all my unread email first and all my read email second. I've really quickly glossed over. The question is, yeah. where do the archive emails go? Where do the archive emails go? So um, they, you can find them like in a browsable list in something called all mail, but you literally never need to go there because you can just search for those emails. Um, all that archiving does is removes the inbox label. The email is still in your account. Uh, but, uh, but if you do really want to peruse everything that you've ever archived and all your unread messages, you can go to something called all mail, which I can, sh I can talk to you individually later about finding that. So when, when I was, uh, I kind of glossed over something here. When I was replying to Janice here, and then I can hit send an archive, you'll notice on the bottom here, I have the option to undo. I assume you've all probably noticed that, but if not, it's a great tool. Um, one thing you can change about that is how long you get to undo, how long you, you have to undo before the message actually sends. So in settings, the undo send, I think the default is 10 seconds, but you have between five and 30 seconds. And that's every message delayed that amount. Okay, now. My, one of my favorite things to change in the layout of Gmail to save time is to make Gmail look a little bit more like Apple Mail, Thunderbird, Outlook, any of those dedicated mail programs. And that is dividing the screen into sections. Yes, a question? Four, uh, four, minutes. four minutes left, okay. <laughs> so uh, what we're gonna do here is uh, create, or open up the uh, preview pane, and that's under settings. And then, we're going to advanced for the first time. We've so far been in general and inbox. Now we're moving over to advanced. And we want to turn on the preview pane and then save. Now, for some reason, Gmail doesn't change after that. Oh, it did on mine. Uh, on yours, it may not change. And the reason is that it asks, it wants you to choose the layout here. I have previously set this up with a vertical split, so it must have remembered that. Um, you can also do a ver uh, horizontal split. You'll see the difference here. And so what this, what's this allows you to do is you've got your little uh, collection of main buckets on the left, then you've got your email here, and then you can read your email below, or I prefer the, oops, I'm clicking the wrong button here, the vertical split. And then it's really easy to just read your email with single clicks. I'm gonna leave it on Janice's email for a few seconds here and you'll notice that it goes from bold to not bold, indicating that I've read that message. It took maybe three to five seconds. You can control how long that takes for the message to be marked as read and you can also mark it as read or not. I've found that the Gmail is a little bit less than reliable with changing this term here from mark as read to mark as unread. It should say unread. If I check the box, it will fix that. I can then make that unread. But controlling how long it takes is a matter of going to settings again, back to settings, and choosing, let's see, it's under general, <laughs> Sorry, look for the, uh, the seconds term. There we go. No, nope, it's not that. Um, where am I? All right, who sees it? <laughs> there it is. Market conversation is red. I couldn't search for seconds because it was inside the choices. So I could say 20 seconds versus three, which I had set before. Or you know, if you want immediately or never, that's an option as well. I don't have to save my changes. And now when I click on an email, it's gonna take longer for it to turn from bold to unbold. Okay, 
Next thing, as I move my mouse, you'll see these little icons appearing and disappearing, which cover up some of my information here. These are called hover actions, and I'll talk about Boomerang later if we have time. I can quickly use these tools. We're at time. Okay, we'll do an advanced session and cover other things later. Our 15 minutes is up, but uh, these hover actions, last thing here, they can be turned off under settings, general, and search for the word hover. You can disable hover actions and save. And it's a little less, to me, it's a little less busy. Now when I point at these, I don't get all those options popping up. I can still select an email or just click it, and I have all my options up at the top. Okay, so that's uh, our quick 15-minute overview. Thanks for coming to the, yeah, first tech tips. We will uh, do more in the future. Um, I'm going to stop the recording and take individual questions. And, yeah, we'll put the recording in the email so you can watch it again later. Thanks.